Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing China, and specifically the recently announced 5-year plan that China proposed for their space missions. Essentially telling us a little bit more about what China is going to be doing from 2022 up until about 2027. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the idea of why they're doing this. Well, if you know anything about communism, and just a reminder, China is still communist, they often rely on so-called five-year plans, something that the Soviet Union started back in 1928. And because of this, every government organization in China has to come up with the so-called five-year plan, thoroughly describing what they're going to be doing, how much funding they're going to need, and of course, uh, what all of this is for. But when it comes to the actual successes of these plans, well, it's not always really that successful. Although for the Chinese space agency, so far it's been doing pretty good. And the first four plans from the year 2000, 2006, 2011, and 2016 so far have been pretty accurate. Now, if you'd like to read the plan itself yourself, the white paper for this is available in the description below, but it is a pretty lengthy read and might take you a while. And so in this video, we'll just go through the summary of everything it says which would then hopefully give us an idea of what China's goals are in space and what is going to be achieving until about 2026. And so first of all, well, the plan itself is very realistic and very down to earth. Even though there was an article a few months ago about China potentially thinking of building some kind of a tremendously large spacecraft in the orbit of the planet. If you'd like to read more about this, there's an article from Scientific American in the description below. None of this was, of course, meant to be practical. These were just investigations in terms of potentials or theoretical analysis. And so the actual proposal is very specific and extremely simple. And it does focus on several different ideas. The primary mission for Chinese space agency right now is to improve their rockets. With the report, first of all, focusing on the environmental improvements, making the rocket launches pollution free and also developing a new type of a rocket that can be used with more regular launches and potentially even include reusable upper stages that can re-enter atmosphere and then be reused similar to SpaceX. With all of this currently being funded by the government through various small startups in China, although at the moment they're still not really there just yet. The second major part of the plan is in regards to the so-called Beidou satellite system which is essentially China's answer to the GPS that we all use. And in this case, they want to come up with a more accurate positioning system that can be used for both remote sensing, but also for various types of environmental monitoring. And more importantly, they want to improve the accuracy of the current system. At the moment, there are 55 satellites currently in operation, and it's been around for about two decades now, but the system is still not as accurate as the GPS system even though it already generates China quite a lot of money. Last year, for example, it generated approximately $46 billion in revenue. And this is only expected to go up by approximately 10 times in the next three to four years. The third part of the report is in regards to scientific missions, and in this case, scientific satellites, with the biggest one being, of course, this right here, the so-called Chinese Hubble. We've discussed this in one of the previous videos, you can find someone right there or in the description. But in essence, Zuntian Telescope is going to be the China's answer to Hubble. And it's going to be orbiting in a very similar orbit to their space station, with an ability to once in a while dock to the station in order to be repaired, upgraded, or potentially turned into a much more powerful telescope over time. As a matter of fact, personally, I'm really looking forward to the launch of this telescope because it's definitely going to serve the international community and provide quite a lot of interesting data for many years to come. But once again, if you'd like to learn more about the telescope and the mission itself, check out that video from before. And they also naturally are going to be completing their space station as well, with the launch of two more modules that are going to be attaching to the station in the next two years. Although exactly what these modules are going to be used for is still not entirely certain. And then China also plans several missions to the moon. In this case, it's going to be Chang'e 6, 7 and 8. Chang'e 6, in this case, is going to be most likely retrieving samples from the moon and conduct quite a lot of other research here as well. Although in this case, China is also hoping to get, possibly, some help from Russia, but we're still not sure if this collaboration is going to work out yet. 
Mostly because, in the past, Russia has already backed out from various missions with China for one reason or another. But the interesting part of this proposal is the exploration of the lunar poles. So China, in this case, is actually hoping to reach the poles of the moon and explore the polar regions of the moon by moving from one location to another, potentially even establishing some kind of a permanent station here in the next decade or so with the absolute minimum for the lunar exploration being these three missions, 6, 7, and 8. And one of the last things mentioned in the proposal is the exploration of Mars. China definitely wants to go back to the Red Planet. And in this particular case, they're most likely going to be competing with the Mars Retrieval Mission by NASA and the European Space Agency, and might even become the first to retrieve the material, at least that's what's sort of suggested from the report itself. Although in this case, China is not focusing on outcompeting anyone. As a matter of fact, there is quite a lot of mentioning of collaboration with different countries. Not just Russia, a lot of countries, including of course ESA and NASA. And interestingly enough, they also have made quite a lot of advances in a lot of other fields that are somewhat related to the exploration of Mars and potentially a colony on the Moon. There was actually an article not so long ago that, as always, you can find in the description below, that talked about a laboratory in China that got inspired by this really famous experiment from a couple of decades ago by a Nobel laureate, Andre Geim, who famously used a phenomenon known as diamagnetic levitation to levitate a frog by placing it in a relatively powerful magnetic field. And interestingly enough, the frog was totally fine. Also, as an interesting side note, Andre Geim is the only person alive today that was awarded both a satirical version of the Nobel Prize for his levitation of a frog, and then, 10 years later, also won an actual Nobel Prize for his other work on his work with the material known as graphene, something that could potentially be one of the most important materials in existence. Now, you can actually read more about this experiment involving a levitating frog in the link in the description below, and it was actually a very interesting experiment, not just for the novelty reasons, it also disproved some of the older misconception about magnets. But this idea of diamagnetic levitation gave scientists in China an idea as well. They realized they can actually use a somewhat similar principle to create a chamber that's approximately 60 centimeters across that could then be used to potentially recreate gravitational conditions on other objects. For example, the moon. In other words, it can reduce the total gravity experienced by various objects by introducing this very powerful magnetic field. Or, in other words, instead of levitating something, it's just going to reduce the amount of gravity this object is going to be experiencing by basically introducing an opposite force, in this case electromagnetic force, acting from below. Although in this case it's important to understand that this is not actually levitation as we sort of usually think of it. It's not anti-gravity. In this case, it simply generates an opposing electromagnetic force that, that ends up counteracting gravity and ends up reducing the total force felt by the object. But because of the size of this particular device and because of the magnetic forces involved, the actual design had to be very, very sophisticated. So, for example, instead of using certain types of cables or metallic components, they had to replace them with things like aluminium or several other components that would not be affected by magnets. But it looks like it worked, and it looks like they were able to produce very similar gravitational pull to the Moon, which means that any future potential lunar missions can use this particular chamber to test various ideas without actually going to the Moon first, which is of course somewhat important for any potential crewed mission or any mission involving complex electronics or any other complex device. And so it looks like in the next five years, China definitely has some big plans for the space exploration. Big plans for the Moon, big plans for planet Mars, and of course big plans for their space station and even their telescope that's going to be operating in the next few years. But until we learn more or until they announce something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.